Welcome to the Museum of Christian Art. The Museum of Christian Art was set up in 1994 in the seminary of Rashol. It moved to the convent of Santa Monica in 2002. This is our 25th year. We have with us conservators from INTAC, that is Indian National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage, who are with us to carry out the conservation of the museum's collection. As you know, the museum has a collection of Indo-Portuguese art spanning from the 16th century till the middle of the 20th century. The uniqueness of this art is the Indian influences on Christian art. We are now going to look more closely at the work that is presently underway with uh, the conservators of INTAC. I have with me Ms. Merin Anil, who is the conservator and coordinator of the project in Goa. So we have started the conservation work of all the objects in the collection of museum art from uh, July onwards. So the initial stage was setting up uh, of the lab space. So as uh, INTAC, Indian National, uh, the organization which I represent that is Indian National Trust for Art and Cultural Heritage. It has a, uh, it's a non-government organization which basically uh, works for conserving the cultural heritage we have. So it has various departments like architectural, conservation department, material heritage division, intangible heritage, all catering to different fields of conservation and also promoting as well as uh, educating children regarding the need to protect and conserve the heritage. Um, so basically we started with conservation of Museum of Krishna objects in 2014. So we came here in 2014 and documented all the objects in the collection. So basically that documentation gave us uh, an idea about what kind of deterioration had happened or what kind of previous restoration had happened, what is the need uh, of these objects, how they have to be conserved. So based on that we made a detailed uh, project report and we submitted it to the Museum of Christian Art on basis of which the project uh, or the conservation project itself started in July 2018. So as I said before, initially we started with the setting up of the lab. So uh, you can see the lab, uh, it's this temporary lab space which is inside uh, the convent of Santa Monica Church. So we can see what work is happening right now. So Merin, what is the process when you take up an object for conservation? The first process is uh, documentation of the problems. So we start with photographic documentation. We do a detailed photography of the object to see uh, front, back and all sides to see what kind of damage this object has and we also have a written documentation along with the photographic documentation. So we can see whether it has been infested with termites or any kind of pest or any wood borers uh, or whether the uh, there is pa uh, flaking of paint layer and whether there is any kind of crack or there are losses. So we document all of these losses and problems in the wooden object. So this uh, documentation process is done because it gives us an idea like what to start first like for example if there is an object which has a lot of flaking on it so the ideal process would be to locally consolidate the paint layer otherwise when we start cleaning the object then the paint layer might get lost so uh, then cleaning also has different uh, different steps like sometimes we do mechanical cleaning sometimes it has to be solvent cleaning so we have to make an assessment like what kind of treatment should be first done. So for that we need to have a proper documentation of all the problems. So this is the 18th century Pieta. Uh, it's a polychrome wooden sculpture. So what are the problems that we see in this sculpture, if at all there are problems? Well, with this sculpture, uh, on when we look at it as a museum object, we may not see many problems on it. But we, when we look at it, as a conservator we see a lot of problems for example right now you can see that uh, there is a lot of dust and dirt accumulation but when we look at it from the front we don't see it very immediately but when we look at it at a close level we can see that there is a lot of deposition uh, for example you can see that on the lap of mother mary jesus christ is there so this area this particular area has a lot of dust deposition on it so even 
uh, look at it with a magnifying glass we may only just see the dust layer here in this case we cannot see the paint layer or the gilded layer in this so for that what we use is we have a portable tool that is a usb microscope so be, uh, by using that we can see in detail like what kind of um, uh, problems are there like uh, right now there is only uh, dust and dirt accumulation which we see but we when we look at it closely like using this tool so now i am placing the usb microscope on the area you can see there is dust dirt layer as well as you can see some pink and red combination there you can see a bit of uh, gilt layer also so these all layer are now under the dust layer which has been ingrained on the surface so this is one reference we have like when we clean this object we have to uh, take in reference that we have to uh, mechanically clean this area so that to remove dust and dirt layer and we have to uncover this painted layer without damaging it so unless and until we know that there is something existing there we cannot uncover it what are some of the other problems that this object has since it is a polychrome wooden sculpture so wood has the tendency of having cracks like while drying it has it uh, has a lot of crack problems which happens expansion and contraction due to which there is cracks happening in the uh, wooden object so as well as not only the wooden uh, part of the object but also on the paint layer we can see a lot of crack what happens is eventually these cracks uh, on the paint layer develops into uh, like dislocating from the surface itself and this creates uh, flaking so that means the paint layer has the uh, capacity or tendency to flake out of the object's body so when this uh, paint layer flake out of the object's body then you see losses so with this particular object if i rotate this object you can see that there is a paint layer which is completely different and it doesn't look very natural to the object so what had happened is there might have been a flaking or a loss or something and a previous restoration or an intervention had happened so it seems like there has been some kind of filling which is a chorus filling and to tone up that filling they have added a layer of color to it so you can see that visually there is a difference between the tones and you can also make out from the texture of this filling itself that it's not a very smooth filling it's a, a very chorus filling and it doesn't go well with the body of the object so this is a previous intervention and i as i was telling you that the problem of cracks are very common with wooden object so these are the cracks. yes these are the cracks so you can see that this crack run along from the uh, head po neck portion to this area so if we don't fill this crack or if we don't arrest this problem with the environmental changes or the climatic changes there would be always uh, expansion and contraction so this crack can enlarge or it can go bigger than this area and uh, when the cracks are bigger there is a possibility that there would be deposits or it's like an invitation for pest and insect to come and settle there so in that case when a pest or insect comes and settle it adds more problem it uh, in case of termite you know that it eats the object itself and completely makes it hollow so it's important that we seal these crevices or the places where the pest or insect or any kind of dust or dirt accumulation can accumulate and apart from that there is an uneven uh, layer of varnish also lots of previous retouchings you can see on the head of the object and there is uh, flaking of paint layer also you can see on the feet portion that the paint layer is lost and uh, the paint layer is open now so it there is a possibility that if we don't consolidate this area this can flake and it uh, it can lead into a loss also we'll go to the next object which is this infant jesus savior of the world it is an object which is um, silver on wood and has already been conserved um can you tell us why it looks like it is half painted and this there are some gaps in the painting and why have we left it in this condition uh, this object uh, ideally had a cloth with it 
it it had a cloth with it it was wearing a uh, vestment also and for conservation purposes we had to remove that and we have conserved the textile part separately so basically when you look at the object you can see a lot of losses on the object since it's a museum object and it has a historical value to it so we have preserved the object in the nature it was intended to be we haven't added any uh, colors or anything or we haven't added any layers to it because when we add more layers to it it takes out the authenticity of the object so we have preserved whatever way the object was intended to be made with the colors it already had so uh, with this particular object this is a conserved piece uh, this object had a lot of problems uh, first of all because it has a uh, polychrome wood as well as uh, wood on the base of the object uh, wood as well as silver so it's a composite object it had textile it has wood it has uh, metal also so the metal has a tendency for tarnishing so when we received this object this had a lot of dust layer as well as tarnishing of the silver had occurred due to which it was looking completely black so when we we had to clean that patination and the tarnished layer not the patination the tarnished layer we have to clean and after that there were some uh, places where the uh, object was a bit wobbly or you can say the base was not in an even le level so we have to do some uh, reintegration of those areas and we have to stabilize and realign the object so that it doesn't uh, have a tendency to fall or when it's under display it doesn't have any problems regarding to the standing regarding like it can stand properly so we have made those uh, uh, changes in this object so we have another uh, polychrome sculpture with us this is saint veronica uh, the sculpture of saint veronica what were the problems in this object while you were conserving it this particular object had a lot of uh, overpaint on it and it also had flaking as well as the major problem was of termite even though it was not an active infestation but it had led to a, a serious damage like the base of this object this is currently in a conserved state the this base of this object was completely hollow and it was eaten up and it was the wooden part was really brittle and you could see so many uh, small holes in it so what it was an open area so what we decided was like if we don't uh, fill it up or we, if we don't uh, like completely arrest that area the wood part might uh, because it's very brittle it might break and it might fall and uh, it is also like i said in the previous object also it's like an active invitation for termite or any kind of dust accumulation or infestation to happen again so for that purposes this entire base area was completely hollow so we filled up this area and all the flaking paint layer we have consolidated them so that there would be no loss in the future or no kind of uh, like flake would occur so all the areas which had possibility to flake or possibility to lose we have completely consolidated them and that had happened before uh, that had happened after removal of the uh removal of the overpaint and then we did the mechanical cleaning and uh then we did the uh consolidation part so this is jigmit uh she is working with the with a polychrome sculpture she is working on the image of saint rock basically what she is doing right now is she is cleaning she is doing the solvent cleaning so this is one of the second stages of conservation she has already done local consolidation of all the areas where the paint layer was flaking and she has also done the mechanical cleaning to remove the dust and dirt layer and now she is doing solvent cleaning so basically what she is doing is like whatever previous restoration in form of uh, uh, adhesives in form of uh, uh, paints over paint she is removing that area and uh, uh, right now you can see that she has cleaned till this portion so uh, and what she will be doing next is like she would be filling up the areas with cracks and she would be doing consolidation of this area as well as filling up of the cracks so the next uh, sculpture we are looking at is this is the sculpture of saint anne and the virgin saint anne and the virgin so this is juhi so she is also doing uh, solvent cleaning right now 
they she has completed with the local consolidation as well as mechanical cleaning this object also had similar problems of uh, uh like flaking paint layer and losses and dust and dirt accumulation so she has already done the local consolidation of the areas where the paint layer were flaking and she has also done the mechanic uh, mechanical cleaning now she is doing the solvent cleaning so you can see this area of the sculpture uh, that this area is clean she has cleaned it and she is uh, doing the other part of the uh, wheel meren we have so many churches and chapels in goa and some of the homes have private chapels with you know beautiful sculptures and uh, what would be your advice to the custodians of all these beautiful artworks which are so unique to goa what would be your advice to them on how to look after these objects uh, without having undergone a conservation training what is the simple things that they can do to conserve their objects for posterity so in other words what would be the do's and the don'ts for 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 all our uh, viewers who are watching this program uh basically what problem we uh observe generally with all the objects which we get into uh, get in for conservation whether it's a object from the museum uh, or whether it's a object from a private collector the basic problem we observe is like most of the time uh, even though it's uh, we cannot say that they are doing conservation but what they do is like lot of previous interventions we see like in form of uh, adding new paint layer or uh, filling up or things like that so what happens is when you add a new paint layer to it or uh, fill up with materials which are not suitable for the object that leads to a lot of problem to the object rather than helping the object so uh, first of all i have to start saying that proper handling of the object is important that if there is a uh, if you have a collection of objects then they have to be properly handled you have to take care of how you move the object from one place to another and you have to take into consideration that the object might have uh, areas or places which might be a bit sensitive so you have to uh, address that like if there is a sculpture which has a hand which is not intact completely so you should in uh, you should always take care of it you shouldn't lift uh that object with uh, putting stress to that particular area and the other th uh, thing is like when there is cobweb or any kind of insects on that object or some when you notice something you have to take a soft brush and clean it but you have to also take into consideration that whether there is a paint layer which is very sensitive whether it can flake and it can lead to losses so these kind of things we have to address so these are small tips or small things which we can take into consideration like cleaning proper maintenance handling the object so most of the problems can be arrested like uh, that but what we see is when we get an object there has all uh, they like people take it, take hand, uh, things into their own hands and then they start uh, putting up more colors to it because the previous color had flake flake doff or there is a lot of losses so they are not uh, looking uh, very appealing to them so in that case what they do is they paint over with a new emulsion paint or something like that so the previous paint layer and the new paint layer may not be very compatible because they might be two different mediums so when that object uh, is bought for conservation then it is very difficult to remove the paint layer so there is always a risk that while taking out the uh new paint layer there is a possibility that the previous paint layer might be affected it may not completely get lost but it might be affected and uh, in mostly polychrome sculptures we see that there is a lot of coarse filling which has been added to the object because there is a loss or some termite uh, affected or insect affected area is there so they fill up that area so this coarse filling might have some kind of adhesive or binder which is too strong for the object so it can uh, lead to lot of stress in the object it can lead to cracks it uh, and when we try to remove it it can also take a bit of the original part of the object so these things has to be kept in mind uh, not to do any uh, infillings or any kind of overpaint or things like that because if you do that the history of the object is lost you are completely covering it up with new paint layer and removing that would become a lot difficult than we actually think it is easy to do so ideally what you are saying is if um, there are some simple things like taking off um, 
a cobweb from the object that can be done but if it uh, involves more detailed work which is an infilling or uh, a repainting or a retouching it should be done by a, a professional conservator and so they should consult with uh, professional conservators in case they need to get their object conserved is am i right yes, yes. Many, uh, like when we use any kind of solvent or any kind of filling, we do a lot of testing. Like we do a comparative study between the binders, between the material we use, so that to see whether it is compatible with the object or not. We, the main idea of conservation is that whenever we do a treatment, it should be reversible in nature. It shouldn't be too strong for the object that it might lead to more problems to the object. For example, if you are consolidating or if you are filling up a crack, so in case if the uh, crack needs, if the filling has any kind of problem we may not we may be able to take it out but in case of a, uh, a filling which has not been tested or studied and just put into the object to arrest, uh, arrest or control the problem temporarily it can lead into more problems so a lot of research work goes into uh, these kind of fillings and consolidating what to be used for the object and what shouldn't be used for the object we do all of that after a lot of research study and testing so it's not like you should uh, uh, some homemade remedies should be done for the object because that could actually uh, elevate the problem more and create more problems for the object. Thank you so much Merin for explaining the whole conservation process to us and we hope to see you soon. Thank you.